to preach to you today on this Easter Sunday from a rather unusual uh, subject and you'll have to bear with me and follow along and uh, to to see uh, what God is saying today I want to preach from this subject God's good man God's good man and this is an Easter message about the role that we play in the plan of God. Because there's a plan going on right now. So I don't want to preach today uh, from about Easter from a mere past and historical perspective. But there are some things going on today. And there is a role that the God of the Bible has for every one of us to play. in what's happening right now. right now. Father, bless us as we preach the word of the Lord. May we do no damage, but preach that which becometh sound doctrine and holiness in Jesus' name. Amen. Today's message, God's good man, brethren, is it's not about the role of a man or a male as the head of his household, even though the good man of the house here is a reference to um, the, the master of a house, the head of a family. You can also, uh, a despot or a, uh, a dictator, a, a ruler, a lord, someone in a position of authority. But this is not a gender specific message. It, it's it's going to deal with the role that um, uh, this head of the household played in the plan of God. As a matter of fact, um, it's not just about the role of uh, uh, one man, but it's actually the role that four men played in uh, bringing about something that absolutely had to happen. I want you to let that sink in. Sink in. The role that four men played in bringing about something that absolutely had to happen. And what's interesting in this, uh, I think I'm going to change on the fly here and, 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 and go from one man, man to four men, from four men to five. Because in this that we're going to study, we're going to see that belief played a major role, as did, now I hope you're comfortable, when I, for, I hope you're ready for what I'm about to tell you, as did someone's unbelief. The God of the Bible rules and super rules. And you know, there's a saying that says, God said it. I believe it, and that settles it. And uh, that was very popular back in the uh, 70s, uh, late 70s when I got saved. And then my pastor being the spiritual leader that he was, he began to preach, and he said, look, God said it, and that settles it. <laughs> there are some things that require faith on the part of the believer, but there are some things, whether you believe them or not, God's going to do it. That which is determined, Daniel says, must be done. So in our text, we're going to see the role that belief played and the role that unbelief played. And uh, both were, were necessary to bring about this thing that absolutely had to happen. Something that, that was so important that every soul of man could not be saved without. That gives you some idea of the gravity of what I am speaking of. 
something that had to happen that was so important that the plan of the almighty God of the Bible depended upon. This thing had to work. Something that God had planned actually before the foundation of the world. Ephesians 1 and 4 says, according as he hath chosen us in him, in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Yeah. Ephesians 1 and verse 4. This was, however, a time-sensitive plan. This was a plan that was delicate and it would take precision to carry this thing out. This plan required both faith and acumen. You had to be smart and you had to believe. Uh, there was no room for fools in this plan, especially with the, when dealing with the four this plan was a plan that required men to play roles that were both gigantic and micro all at the same time. The feast of unleavened bread that we've mentioned lasted, this feast lasted seven days. And uh, it was from the 15th to the 21st of uh, the month uh, Nisan, which is April for us, May, April, uh, March, April for us. But during the time of Christ, uh, the period lasted from the 14th through the 21st day. If you read Matthew's gospel, for those of you who have your Bibles, uh, verse 26, uh, chapter 26 and verse 17, it says, now the first day of the feast of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? This Matthew 26 and 17 corresponds with Luke chapter 22, not verse 1, but verse 8. 7. Verse 7 says, Then came the day of unleavened bread when the Passover was to be killed. And Peter and John saying, uh, and he said to Peter and John, Go and prepare. What Matthew shows us in chapter 26, verse 17, was that the disciples actually asked the Lord, Where are we going to Go, what will be the location? What's the address? Where will we go to celebrate um, the, uh, the Passover uh, since you don't own a home? It appears, follow me now as we teach the word of the Lord, that because this Passover fell on the Sabbath, that some chose to eat the meal on Thursday. Toward mid-afternoon, around 3 p.m. of Thursday the 14th of Nisan, a convenient group of perhaps 10 people or 12 would bring to the temple court a lamb to the priests to be sacrificed. The lamb had to be perfect. Less than a year, no older than a year, without spot and without blemish. And 10, maybe 12 people representing a family would take the lamb to the temple. And once it was taken to the temple, it was given to the priest and the priest took the lamb. He sacrificed it and took the blood and passed it in basins along a line until it was poured out at the foot of the altar. They also burned the lamb's fat on the altar 
of burnt offerings. So they poured out the, the blood, put the, the fat of the lamb on the altar, and uh, after sunset, the family would gather at home and eat the Passover lamb. Now what was interesting was that in the Jewish calendar, at sunset, around 6 p.m. on Thursday, at sunset, 6.01 p.m. on the Jewish calendar, was considered the next day. So at 6.01 p.m., if at, now follow me now, if at between uh, 12 and 3 in the afternoon on Thursday, they took the lamb to the temple, they had it sacrificed, and they got back home and set everything up and prepared the Passover, and then sat down at 6, and they uh, partook in the Passover meal. 6 p.m. on down was considered no longer Thursday, but it was Friday. It was the next day. All of this, of course, was to commemorate what God did uh, to Pharaoh, to Egypt, when the Lord got tired of playing with him. And the Lord said, now I'm going to send a deaf angel. And when I'm finished, uh, he will let my people go. Exodus chapter 12, verse 13 and 14 reads, and the blood, and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And this day, look, look at this, and this day shall be unto you for a memorial. Keep this. And you shall keep it a feast to the Lord, throughout your generations, you shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. And if you read uh, uh, Exodus chapter number 12, you will see how God sent the, the deaf angel and how the angel uh, swept through the land of Egypt, even Goshen, where the children of Israel lived. But he told them, to sacrifice a lamb, put the blood on the lintel of the doorpost. And when the deaf angel passed through, when he would see the blood, he would pass over you. Now, that's the essence of Passover. Now, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which was a part of the Passover celebration, but it took place for seven days more, was to commemorate how during the Passover that night, uh, the Lord told them to prepare a meal, but you, you, you won't have enough time to put leaven, uh, yeast in the bread. It would take too long for the bread to bake because you're going to have to eat and prepare in a hurry, and you're going to have to get out in haste. So make sure there's no leaven uh, in the bread, hence the Feast of Unleavened Bread, be prepared to eat quickly, eat with your shoes on, eat dressed to leave, because you're going to have to make a quick exit from Egypt. If you read, you can see this in Exodus chapter 12, verse 7 says, And they shall take of the blood and strike it upon the two side posts and upon the, uh, on the upper door posts of the house, wherein you shall eat it, and you shall eat the flesh in that night, roasted with fire. And look at this, unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Eat it not raw, nor sodden, that is, you can't bo boil it in water, uh, but roasted with fire, its head and its legs, and with the putrescence thereof. That is, wash it, but with the internals and all on the inside. All right? 
wash the internals out, clean it up, and then enjoy the meal. And you shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remaineth of it until the morning you shall burn with fire. And thus shall you eat it, and your loins, look at this, and thus shall you eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. So this is what they were commemorating. And it was they were commemorating it because God said do it every year. For, for this is, this was the plague that broke the back of Egypt. And God defeated the Egyptian gods and, and Pharaoh, and Pharaoh let God's people go. Now, it was a very exciting time in Jerusalem, the time of Passover, one of three celebrations where all the Jewish males were required to return home to Jerusalem. Uh, there, could have, there were thousands of people in the streets poured into Jerusalem. They came from all over the Roman Empire. Now, I want you to visualize this. The streets of Jerusalem are jam-packed, hustling and bustling with people who were in town for the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. There were elaborate preparations for the Passover. Roads were repaired. Bridges were made safe. Wayside tombs uh, were whitewashed lest the pilgrims should fail to see them and accidentally touch a tomb and hence become unclean. Now they can't participate in the Passover. For a month before uh, the Passover, the story and the meaning of the Passover was the subject of the teachings in every synagogue. People were getting ready, getting ready, getting ready. Just as I'm saying to you, get ready, get ready, get ready. We will return back to the sanctuary. You know, I'm, I'm praying that you go on and get your dress ready. Get your suit hung up and polish your shoes, iron your shirt. Get ready for, for the Lord is going to bless us to return to the house of God once more. And oh, we're going to shout that Sunday. Mm. <laughs> I, like that. I like that, Wilson. I might name it the day of rejoicing. <laughs> Praise the Lord. What a day. What a day. So they, 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 they taught in the synagogues uh, what happened. Everything that was taking place. And two days before the Passover, in every house, in uh, 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 every Jewish home, uh, that would be a ceremonial searching of the house to see if they could find any leaven. And if they found leaven in the house, the leaven, even the, 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 the smallest particle of yeast would be removed from the house. Every Jewish male, as I forementioned, uh, which lived within 15 miles or more of the holy city, was bound by law. To attend the Passover, but it was the ambition of every Jewish male, of every Jew uh, in every part of the world, every Jew, and it still is today, every Jew in every part of the world wanted to come to Jerusalem for the Passover. And if they couldn't get to every one of them, every Jew... Uh, especially the covenant Jews wanted to at least get to the Passover at least once in a lifetime. And for those who had to keep the Passover in other lands other than Jerusalem, every year they would pray that next year they would observe it in Jerusalem. Josephus, the mighty historian, tells us that the number of lambs that were sacrificed uh, one year, he said, was 256,500 lambs. Now, the law laid down that the minimum number for a Passover celebration had to be at least 10 people. That means that on this particular occasion, if these figures are correct, there must have been more than 
2,700,000 pilgrims at the Passover. Jerusalem was packed with people. Oh, my, you think uh, New Year's Eve, Times Square in New York is something. Oh, my, it paled by comparison with what was going on in this tiny area in J Jerusalem. And uh, the Jews were there uh, from everywhere. See, that, 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 that helps you explain why the day of Pentecost right. was so powerful. They, they, they were there from everywhere. And, and, uh, and, and God poured out the Holy Ghost. <laughs> oh, my. So now, now listen to this. So you got uh, all of these people, and, and they're there, and they're crowded uh, uh, in the city. And the, the drama of what was about to take place what, what was playing out. And, and this is what Jesus, this is the, the setting that our Lord was in. Also during the Passover feast, all Jews were supposed to stay within the boundaries of Jerusalem. But with the crowd being as large as it was, uh, it made that impossible. So uh, for official purposes, they treated cities like Bethany, Jesus' what Jesus' hometown was at the time. They were also considered officially a part of the city. But the feast itself had to take place. Uh, Sister Moe, district missionary, it had to be celebrated in Jerusalem proper within the confines of that location. And one more thing I want to add. Uh, the atmosphere of the Passover was inflammable. The, the Roman government had dispatched more soldiers than usual to more troops than normal to uh, Jerusalem. And to make matters even more intense, the Jewish authorities during this exciting time, during this time where we're celebrating what God did and, and, and delivering the children of Israel out of Egypt and sending the deaf angel, how the blood was placed on the door. What a history. One of the things about the Jewish people, they knew their history. I want to say to my African-American brethren, listen, know your history. Study who we are. If you don't know where you come from, you don't know where you go. It's so important that we not forget and that we appreciate uh, the journey that God has given us. And it's not just for African Americans, for everyone. But we tend many times to um, let our history pass. And we're one of the few groups in America who, whose history was not properly celebrated. Amen. We were cut off from soul from our homeland. Right. Not taken, soul. 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 So uh, that, that way the blame is evenly distributed. That's right. <laughs> That's right. See, we, we stay angry with the folk who, who bought us, but we tend to give a pass to those who sold us. So they, they, they were, it was an exciting time. And, and yet, with this exciting time, the Jewish authorities were planning, trying to figure out how they could kill Jesus without causing a riot. Because if they caused a riot, now they're in trouble with Rome. And the last thing they wanted to do was get in trouble with Rome. So, According to our text, though they had this problem, the text revealed that they thought that the problem was solved because one of Jesus' own men turned on him. I'm going to call this man the fifth man. I'm starting backwards. The fifth, because I told you the text is about five men. Initially, I mentioned one man, the good man. And then I said, well, four men. But then a sense belief and unbelief played a role. I had to stretch it out to five men. Let's look at the actions of the fifth man. Fifth man, do you mind if I work backwards a little bit? You know, I've been accused of being backwards anyway. So the Bible says, 
Uh, now, the feast of, verse, uh, uh, chapter 22, verse 1, now the feast of unleavened bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover. And the chief priests and the scribes sought how they may kill him, and, and for they feared the people. Jesus' popularity had hit an all-time high. Right. So they couldn't, they, couldn't just, they, they couldn't just go out and kill him. Then entered Satan into Judas, surname Iscariot. And notice how specific Luke is, being of the number of the twelve. Satan entered into Judas. Judas was one of the twelve. He was one of our Lord's closest men. Satan entered into him. And when the devil got in, you can tell when the devil's in somebody. The Bible says in verse 4, and he went his way. What, what he did was he, he walked away from Jesus. He told the told Jesus and the and and the, and the uh, remaining eleven say, "Hey, y'all, y'all, excuse me for a minute. I have an errand to run. I got to go somewhere." And so he went his way, and 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 now remember now, the place is packed out. Everybody's getting ready for the Passover. We're about two days. This is this is a, a, a Tuesday Wednesday of that week. So every, the places, people are there. There's so much excitement going on. People are buying lambs. People are getting their Passover stuff ready. People are just, everybody's excited. They're glad to see each other. People uh, speaking various uh, languages uh, from the diaspora. The Jews lived all over. They learned the language of the, their new adopted homelands, but they were in town. It would, it would be quite easy for him to get lost in the crowd almost unnoticed as he went his way. And he met with Jesus' enemies, with men who, had, who were plotting to kill him. He met with the chief priests. Isn't it amazing that Jesus' enemy wasn't the, the, it wasn't the chief gangster trying to kill him. It was the chief priests and captains. How he met with them, how he might betray him unto them. They talk. Let's see how we can work this out. Let's see how we can um, uh, bring this to pass. Now, this is this won't be easy, but uh, you know, uh, I'm on the inside. I, I imagine every now and again he look out the window. And, uh, uh, but uh, this is doable. We, we can, we can, I, I can deliver. I, I can get him to you now. I, 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 I know him pretty well. I've been with him. I've walked with him now for three years, day and night. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm the treasurer. And I, I, I know, I know him. I, I know uh, his, uh, uh, his tendencies. I've studied his pattern. Now, I know that uh, he has amazing powers, but uh, 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 and 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 he's different from anyone that I've seen. But uh, I ca I can deliver him to you. I can deliver him to you. I can. And, and there are those who um, say that perhaps what what Judas was trying to do that Judas had gotten ahead of Jesus, and uh, he was trying to force Jesus's hand. Uh, Crystal, if I could just, if I can just put him, get him before the authorities, and if they threaten to kill him, then he will use his extraordinary powers, and he would defeat them, and he would deliver us, our nation, from Roman bondage, because we've all studied that this Messiah would come, but I'm, 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 I'm disappointed in him because instead of him coming to set up the kingdom that we thought he would set up, this man's talking about some right. spiritual kingdom. Right. He won't challenge the, uh, Herod. He won't challenge Caesar. He, he has the power. I mean, I, I, I saw him walk water. 
I, I didn't get off the ship, but I was on the ship. I witnessed that with my own eyes, and, and I was there when he raised the widow of Nin's son from the dead. I saw it. And, 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 and don't get me started, Judas said. Now, I'm telling you all, this, he's different. He's more than just talk. I've witnessed, Judas says, him giving sight to the blind. And one night we were, we were with him, and he went on a healing spree. And everybody he touched was made whole. Oh, I'm telling you, he said to them, uh, this fifth man, I'm telling you that uh, he's no ordinary guy. Now, don't get me wrong. I can deliver him to you. But if you think that he's just uh, just another rabble rouser, if you think that he's just another uh, challenge to the system, you got it wrong. He's extraordinary. Perhaps he was thinking, I can make Jesus do what I want him to do. So he didn't believe that Jesus knew what he was doing. Be careful, friends of mine, when you try to move before God's time. Oh, it's so wise to just wait on the Lord. Say, so, well, Lord, it's not happening for me fast enough. Well, it may not be happening fast enough as far as you're concerned, but it may be uh, God's timing. It may be perfect. You know, the Lord, the Lord sees things that we don't see. Oh, my. The Lord knows things that we do not know. There are people out there right now who are caught in a lurch. You're in a pickle. You're in a mess because you moved before God told you to. You zigged when God said zag. You ran when God said stay. You jumped when God said stay on. Don't, don't move. You took off, and now you're in a mess. Judas felt that I can deliver him. And maybe if I deliver him, I can force him to do what I want him to do. And that's Satan. That's Satan. That's just like the devil. Went to Adam and Eve and says, uh, did God say you're going to die? If you eat of this tree, you, you won't die. You won't die. God's, God's holding out on you. God's holding out on you. He knows that when you eat of this tree, your eyes will come open. Oh, it's just like the devil. He's subtle. He'll make you think the grass is greener on the other side. Yeah, the devil, he'll speak to you. He'll speak to you. And cause you to feel as though God is not moving fast enough and that you need to help God out. So here he is. And, they, and look at verse 5. They really like what he said. And they were glad. It make, be careful what makes you glad. They were glad and, 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 and coveted to give him money. And look at this. And he promised, I give you my word. He promised, I'll deliver him. And I'm going to look for every opportunity I get to betray him. And I'm going to do it incognito. I got to do this thing where the people won't know. Uh, that uh, I was behind it and that it was even being done. And so while the people, while the people are distracted looking at the coronavirus, I'll, I'll usher in globalism. I'll usher in the depopulation Schemes. I'll, I'll speak to through religious leaders who call for global unity. Somebody said the Pope said we need to unify globally. How are we going to do that? 
Now, I understand the call of unity within the body of Christ, but global unity, somebody got to give up their God. And I'm not giving up mine. There's always, there's always a festival. There's always something that Satan will present to, 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 to cause you to look over there to look, look at, to keep your eyes on that thing while he's doing something much more sinister yes. over here. I don't care what they tell us about the coronavirus, but I'm telling you, I challenge, I say to the governors, the mayors, and all who are in charge, how dare you leave abortion clinics open and you close churches? How dare you leave ABC stores open and you close churches? Why is it that people can go and buy vape? They can do that, and that already causes problem with the lungs, but you close churches. There is something else going on. Now, I, I really would like to be like uh, a lot of the preachers that you're seeing on television, both white and black, and they're just talking about the resurrection and Christ, and we're just going to love, and we're just going to, you know, and that, all that is true. But I want, I want you to know that the chief priests and the, the scribes and the captains are plotting with Judas. Ah, uh, the Bible is right. The Bible said from that time forth, he saw how he could betray him. Judas did not believe, but God used Judas's unbelief to bring about his plan. For Zechariah chapter 11 and verse 12 says, and I said unto them, if you think me good, Give me my price. And if not, forbear. So they weighed my price for 30 pieces of silver. It had been prophesied that the Messiah would be sold. So look at how specific and how precise the Bible is. Zechariah says it's going to happen for 30 pieces of silver. You see here how God used Judas's unbelief. To bring about the scripture. The Bible says. Uh, if the ox shall push a manservant or a maidservant. That is if an ox would goad a slave. Exodus 21 and 32. He shall give him. Shall give unto their master 30 shekels of silver. And the ox shall be stoned. Take the ox. Since that ox has a, a, a taste for killing, taste human blood and for killing people, kill the ox. But you got to pay the slave owner 30 shekels of silver for their slave being killed by that ox. That's the value they put on Jesus. Jesus was sold for the price of a slave. 30 pieces of silver in today's money would be roughly $21.60. Matthew's gospel, chapter number 26. Are you following me? And verse 15 and 16 says, And said unto them, Judas, what will you give me? And I will deliver him unto you. And they coveted with him for 30 pieces of silver. Just as the prophet Zechariah said. And from that time he sought opportunity to betray him. So he left. Are you following me? He leaves the scribes and the Pharisees and the, and the scribes and the, the chief priests and the captains and he steps out back out there in the thronging crowd and he works his way through the crowd speaking to people. Hello, how you doing? Glad to see you. Oh my, uh, 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 the, the Passover is about to start. The, the Feast of Unleavened Bread is about to start and he gets back to the disciples. Hey, man, where you been? Well, good to see you. Yeah, but I had to take care of something, man. I'm, I'm back now. Everything's all right. Everything's cool. And from that point on, he's looking. He's looking. He's looking. He's watching. He's paying attention to everything that's being said. 
How can I betray him? How can I deliver him? Boy, you sure must want need that, uh, that, that $21. The truth is, you know what got him? The truth is he was, uh, he had been stealing all the time. This is why you got to, uh, you got to watch the devil. You got to be careful. You got to watch the devil and because the devil will, will get in you. And the devil will cause you. The, the Bible teaches that a little leaven, leaven after the whole lump. If you don't get rid of your pet sin, your pet sin will get the better of you. Yes. So there he was. And uh, uh, now, let me, are you following me? So it's Thursday now, verse 7. It's Thursday. It's Thursday. And not only is it Thursday now, not only is it Thursday, but it's around midday, uh, around 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Now, are you following me? It says now, verse 7 says, In the day of unleavened bread, when the Passover must be killed, so you got to kill it that Thursday. Right. And they're going to eat it at sundown. Wow. At sundown, Thursday, uh, Thursday becoming Friday. Yes, sir. All right? Now, according to Matthew 26 and 17, the disciples asked him, Okay, now where will thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? When they asked Jesus, what is the location? Where do you want us to go? Jesus, being Jesus, was well aware that Judas heard that question. He heard the question. He's listening. And, 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 and uh, Judas, Jesus knew that Judas was listening and looking and plotting and trying to figure out how he could betray him. And uh, Jesus, Jesus being Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Well, see, what Judas would, would soon quickly find out is while he was playing checkers, Jesus was playing chess. What a mighty God we serve. See, and now, now, because see, Jesus, everything's at stake now. It's, it's, it's crucial, you know. It's why, you know, the, the saints who work with me here, some, some, some of them, I think, think that I'm kind of a hard taskmaster. But, uh, you know, there are, there are times when you just have to get things right. See, now, according to Matthew's gospel, uh, Mark's gospel, chapter 15, and verse 25, all right? Chapter 15, and verse 25 says, And it was the third hour when they crucified him. Right. Now, what does, why do you mention that? Well, it's 3 p.m. on Thursday. Jesus knew by 9 a.m. on Friday, the next day, he would be crucified. See, the crucifixion started at 9. It turned dark at 12 and stayed dark uh, from the 6th hour to the uh, ninth hour, from 12 to 3 o'clock. But Jesus was crucified at night. So it's Thursday around three. He has precious little time to carry out his plan because there was still so much more that he had to teach his disciples before. Friday at nine. Can I get a witness? See, it's, 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 it's on. It's on. 
Everybody's thinking. Jesus is thinking. Judas is thinking. Now we enter, here comes two men. Here comes two men. See, Jesus is thinking because he knows that uh, he's about to do something. He knew, first of all, that it was the will of the Father. That he take place, that he that that what he was about to do at a certain location would take place. It had to happen because we're getting ready to shift. He's getting ready to shift from the Passover to the communion. See, a shift is getting ready to happen. And then anytime, anytime God gets busy, when something's getting ready to happen, the devil. Uh, does things too. This is why you can't just see where we are now through the natural. I'm amazed at all these carnal Christians who can't see anything but the what the news is saying. You got that God to open your eyes. When you see what's going on spiritually, you'll find out that your number one need is to get close to God. Mm-hmm. Jesus was about to do what billions of lambs could not do down through the centuries. A divine change was about to take place, so our Lord brings in two men. I've already dealt with the fifth man. He was the unbeliever. The two good guys were Peter and John. Luke 22 and 7 and 8 says, Then he sent Peter and John. Yes, Peter and John were sent to the temple to sacrifice the lamb. Amen. So after the lamb was sacrificed, now we got to have a house to prepare. Now remember, I keep saying this, this is Thursday. Sundown is after six. And by Friday, uh, Friday morning, by nine, Christ will be on the cross. They will already got hold to Simon of Cyrene, that black brother, and put the cross on Jesus' shoulders. So they asked Jesus a question. Jesus, go into the city. They asked him, uh, uh, where shall we go to prepare the Passover? Verse 9. Tick, 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 tick. The clock's ticking. We're, we're running out of time. See. The clock's ticking. It's winding down. You asking me questions. But the clock is ticking. Now, you have to admit, though, it was a reasonable question. Every one of us today, we're in God's plan. Praise the Lord. The clock was ticking. And uh, Jesus, the question is, where is the physical location? Where is the house? What's the address? Amen. These are good questions. But Jesus had a problem. If I tell them where. Judas will hear me and he will send word to the authorities and they will frustrate my plan. They may interrupt my plan. Remember now Matthew 26 and 16 says from that time forth he saw opportunity to betray him. So if he could get the information in time, he could send it back to Jesus' enemies and they could break up, if not cancel, the Last Supper. And we needed this Last Supper. Had to have this one because everything, uh, honey, is getting ready to change. So the first two men said, ah, where the shall we go. Where would be uh, the what would be the location? All right, are you following me? Yeah. Seem like to me I can hear the folk out there in Facebook uh, and YouTube Live say Amen. <laughs> they said, "Where are you going to go?" Well, well, now, now here comes the third man into the plane. This third man was very important. Jesus said to them. Uh, still not giving away the location because he can't because got Judas standing there. You know, you can't talk around everybody. And, and it, it takes a while to figure out who you can talk around and who you can't. 
Because some of these, these I like to say some, some of these people, amen, uh, 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 who will tell you, 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 can, you can tell me I won't say a word. It's amazing what, what won't say a word means. For, for some people, it means tell 20 people. And uh, they, they said, well, I haven't told a soul. Well, Jesus said, I can't give away the location. So he says, I tell you what will happen. He says, behold, said to the guys, think about this. Now, you got to get this, Peter and John. I've selected you for a good reason. When you enter into the city, there shall meet you a man bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him. No location. No location. Give it away. Judas, Judas still ain't got nothing to work with. Come. Oh, oh, oh. That 30, that, that, that 30, 30 piece of silver. Oh, trying to earn his key. Jesus said, yeah, says, uh, go into the city and you're going to see a man. Now, some believe that this man carrying the water pitcher was a slave. But I tell you, you have to admire this man. You have to admire this man because this man had an unusual assignment. For in biblical times, for men to carry water pots, water pitchers, that was considered a domestic task. That was considered the task of a woman. And most men saw that as being uh, too menial for them. And yet when God gave this man a menial task. I told you some of these roles were both gigantic and micro at the same time. Says, 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 says carry that water. I know that he had to feel some kind of way. Being the only man in Jerusalem. The city is packed. I told you that. People are everywhere. Jews are in town everywhere. And there he is. Carrying a pitcher of water. Sometimes God gives us assignments. That may seem to be small. And people will come up to you and tell you you're working backwards. People will come up to you and tell you you're better than that. People will come up to you and tell you you should be doing more. But if God is using you. See, see the Lord knows where we fit. The Lord knows what our role is at any given time. What if they never call your name? I'll tell you, I'll tell you right now. I guarantee there's nobody out there who can tell me the name of the man carrying the pitcher of water. They didn't recognize him. They didn't call his name. But how? Oh, that man did something that had he not played his role, I wouldn't be saved. And you wouldn't be saved. Oh, Jesus said, now go. And you're going to find uh -huh, a man carrying a pitcher of water. Now you have to admit, you have to admit that uh, it took some faith for Peter and John. The next verse says, and so they, when he told them what to do, they went. Now it took some faith, Matthew tells us, to obey that kind of amen uh, assignment. But one thing about it, Jesus said, now I'm going to give you a sign that you can't miss. So they get there, they get to Jerusalem. Thousands of people. Oh, thousands had on blue, green, yellow. Some had on turban, some didn't. Tall and short, fat, skinny, drunk and sober, buying and selling. Just throng of people. And while they're looking, I don't see anybody, man. I don't, all of a sudden, there's a guy who walks by carrying a, pot, a pitcher of water. Amen. He grabbed it, and so he's walking, praise the Lord. And, 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 and then, then Jesus said, 
when you see him, when you see him, Jesus did not say, introduce yourself to him. Jesus did not say, have a conversation with him. Jesus did not say, praise the Lord, tell him what I told you. Jesus said, I'm going to teach you to follow providence. Jesus said, just follow him. Follow him. Mm -hmm. Don't talk to him. Follow him. In this, Jesus still did not disclose his location. Don't talk, just follow. And then Jesus gave an address. Mm -hmm. He gave one, but it wasn't one Judas could use. You see the address in uh, verse 10. It says, follow him into the house where he entered in. So the address was P.O. Box into the house where he entered in. Jerusalem, Israel. If you can, if you can, if if you can find that on the map, if you can, if you can get GPS coordinates to, to lead you there, then you can find out what I'm doing. In other words, Judas had no information to leak. God Almighty, and our, uh, then we see the fourth man. Now this fourth man was somebody uh, that theologians. Uh, believe that Jesus had already talked about. You see, Jesus had already talked to. He didn't leave anything with a chance. Told the man one day, uh, the day will come when somebody will walk in your house. You're going to see two men that perhaps you've never met. And they're going to walk in your house and they're going to give the password. And they're going to say to you, the master has said unto thee, where is the guest chamber? Where I shall enter in, where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples. Good God Almighty, he said, when that time comes, you can't hesitate. When that time comes, you got to be ready. Oh, Lord. Woo, Jesus. So now here's this man already prepared by Jesus. Told him the day is going to come that these men are going to ask. Ask for, praise the Lord, a room. And when they come, the room has got to be ready. It's got to be flourished. It's got to be furnished. Good God Almighty, we're going to need a couch in the room. We're going to need a chairs. We're going to need uh, pillows. Hallelujah in the room. Low couches. Low tables. We're going to need utensils. We're going to need everything in the room that's necessary for the Passover. You can't wait until you meet these men to get the room ready because when they come, time will be short. Time will be running out. And if you got to go then and prepare the room, you're going to waste precious time because by 9 a.m., good God Almighty, on Friday, I'll be on the cross. So that man, he got saved. Hallelujah. And he got ready. I believe that God was preparing us for this time. I believe he's been preparing us down through the years. But I know he spoke to me and told me, I want you to, to proclaim 2020 as the year of God's truth. Stand on my truth. Stand on my word. And look at where we are today. America is shut down. Hallelujah. Planes aren't flying. Trains aren't running. Buses have stopped. The malls are closed. Good God Almighty. 
The NBA is out of business. They're shut down. Isn't it something that they resorted to playing games on a video, a video basketball tournament? When I saw what that meant, I bust out laughing. I said, how pathetic. Oh, Lord, Major League Baseball is put on pause. Look at what's happening. Stores are closed. Business are out of business. But one thing is alive and well, and that is God's truth. The word of God is still standing. Yeah! Yeah, Lord! You ought to tell the Lord, God, I'll wait until it's time for you to use me. God, I'll do. I'll just live holy. I'll abide my time. Can you believe this? The man had to feel funny going out and getting the furniture and getting everything prepared, not knowing when Jesus would come. But that man said, I'm praying to be ready. I'm working to be ready. Ah! Oh, Lord, I wonder how many are watching who can say, I don't have to run and try to get saved now. I don't have to run and try to find a savior. I don't have to run and scramble to see what God is saying. But I've been in a church. I've been saved. The word of God has been preparing me all this time. So I'm ready to trust God. I'm ready to stand on his word. Oh, I'm ready. Oh, God. Ready. So, this man, Jesus said, now, get ready, because the day will come when it will happen. So now, here we are. It's Thursday. It's in the afternoon. Clock's ticking. His servant walks in the house with a pitcher of water, followed by two men. And they say to him, the master, the master said to thee, uh, where will he eat the Passover? See, we went to the city. We sacrificed the lamb. Now we need a room. We need a room to eat the Passover. What, what, what was so important? What was so important? Why? Why this sensitivity? Why? Why? What? Wouldn't talk to me. What, what? What's your point? Well, Jesus needed time. The time was running out. He knew by nine I got to be on the cross. But, but, but there were things that he needed time to teach. There were words that needed to have been recorded. There were doctrines and truths of the faith that if I don't have time to tell them this, Christianity won't survive. So, in John's gospel, chapter number 13, and verse uh, 27, we read, And after the sop, Satan entered into him, Judas. Then said Jesus unto him, That which thou doest, do quickly. Say, now, now they're in the house. And, and here's, here's the thing, here's the thing, uh, Saints out there, Judas didn't know where the location was until he arrived. The only people who knew where it was ahead of time was 
Peter and John because they followed the man. So then when the disciples got there with Jesus and Judas, there was no time for Judas to send word back to where the location was. So Jesus, after he finished eating the Passover, he teaches them the doctrine of foot washing. And as he began to teach, he began to foretell his death. How he has been betrayed. They, be, they begin to ask, was it me? Was it me, right? So he, he dips into the sock. And, and Satan entered into Judas. Because, you know, he's already, we, we already read two days ago, the devil was in it. And, uh, and Jesus says to him, what you going to do? Do quickly. So this is another unction of the devil, Satan in him. Now, look at verse 28. No man at the table. See, the man had already furnished the room. Got the tables, the couches. You will lay on your side, your feet away from the table, laying on the side, the table in the middle where they would be partaking of the Passover. So Jesus says to, see, the, the painting of the table of the Last Supper is not correct. So Jesus says to Judas, that what you do is do quickly. Well, the others heard it, but some thought that Jesus, since Judas had the bag, that Jesus said unto him, and go buy those things that are necessary for the feast. Because remember, the feast of unleavened bread took place for seven days. The Passover was one night. One day, one night. They're doing that now. So he said, for the go, they thought he was saying, go, go to Walgreens. Go to the store. Get some supplies. Or they thought maybe he was sent him to go buy something to give to the poor. Verse 30, then he having received, then he then having received the sop, went immediately out. And look at this. Let's give you an idea. And it was night. So it's after six. Sun's gone down. It's Friday. So now it's not. After he leaves, verse 31, therefore, when he was gone, out. Now Judas is gone. Jesus said, now is the son of man glorified. And God is glorified in him. And, and he begins to teach. And he begins to tell them that he's going away. Yeah. Judas doesn't hear any of this. Where is Judas? I wonder, he's working through the crowd. Streets are packed. He can't move fast. Got to get to the headquarters where the chief priests, the captains, and the scribes are to try to tell them where Jesus is. <laughs> because, see, he got the location late. See, God's got a plan now. So now he's, while he's gone, let me tell you what he misses out on. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Judas didn't hear any of this. What Jesus said in verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Judas didn't hear any of that. Woo! Jesus began to teach. And all of the teachings on the comforter, who is the Holy Ghost. See, he had to teach all of this uninterrupted, undisturbed. Time's running out, but I still got a lot to tell y'all. So he's teaching them, teaching them about the whole, teach them in chapter 15, I am the true vine. My father's the husband man. Good God Almighty. To say to them in his teachings, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask what you will and it shall be given to you. Oh, he teaches them. Teaches them about love, greater love. Have no man than this, than a man will lay down his life for his friends. He teaches them to love one another. Yes, oh, he's laying it out. John right there taking notes on all that. Yes, sir. Where's Judas? Out there. He finally gets to the scribes. The, 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 the plotters. Yes, hey, y'all. I'm 
sorry, but I found, I know where he is. I know where he is, but he didn't disclose his location. I, 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 I couldn't find out until we got there. He, he, he used, uh, he used the plan. He, he used espionage. He, he used the plan, cloak and dagger. He, he didn't let me find out. I, I'm sorry I'm late, but now let, let's go and, and, and let's get him. Let's go get him. So well, 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 it's gonna take a few minutes now, cause you know Jerusalem packed, right. streets are packed. Yeah. You can't travel fast. Everybody's stuck in traffic. Bom, bom, bom. Can't nobody go anywhere. Oh, <laughs> a donkey turned over its cart and they, get that thing out the street. We got somewhere to go. In the meantime, Jesus is in there preaching. Ah. Chapter sixteen. But now I go my way to Him that sent me. And none of you ask me, where goest thou? He's laying down the teachings. He's teaching and preaching the word of God. Are you with me? He tells them in a little while, and you shall not, verse 16, uh, of chapter 16, a little while, and you shall not see me. And again, a little while, and you shall see me. Because I go to my father. Oh, he's teaching them. Then one of his, then one of, verse 17, then some of his disciples uh, among themselves, then said some of his disciples among themselves, what is this that he, he, he's saying to us? A little while and, and you shall not see me. And again, uh, we, we, we're going to see him because he's going to the Father. Uh, they, they, they said, therefore, uh, what is this that he's saying? A little while. and We, uh, we cannot tell what, what he said. So you see why they didn't need to be interrupted. Because he need, he, I got I to teach him. I got to teach him this. Yeah, see, and so he know what Judas is. He still got a ways to go. I still got, I still got time, and uh, and so he's teaching, and he and then he prays, chapter seventeen, that mighty priestly prayer, verse seventeen, where we get our theme from this year. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Look at God's plan. And Judas, uh, tell you something funny. Tell you something funny. God has a sense of humor. Judas finally arrives, right? Judas gets there. But guess what? When he get there, Jesus is gone. He gets to the upper room. And Judas, he's up there. Go out there. Go up those back steps. They're up there. Get there and Jesus is gone. Where is Jesus? The Bible tells us, chapter 18, verse 1, and Jesus, and when Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook Cedron, which was, where was a garden into which he entered and his disciples. He went to the garden of Gethsemane. That's where he prayed for three hours. Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. Now, Judas is trying to figure out now, because they're looking at him saying, uh, where is he? <laughs> where is he? God, I mean, he was here. I was here. Look, I was in here with him. I, we had, com we, he, matter of fact, he introduced the communion here. He broke bread and told us, this is my body, and gave us, wine and, and he taught he taught us foot washing. Oh I mean look at all this stuff. There's evidence that they were here. They said, look, where is it? So chapter 18 of John and verse uh two says Judas and Judas also which betrayed him knew the place. He said, for Jesus oftentimes resorted there with his disciples. Judas says, I know a place. Because he would go to this place to pray. Yes. If, if we, I, I guarantee you, that's where he is. He, he, that, that's where we're, we're going to go there. We're going to go there. If we go to this place, because he's predictable now. Because one thing, he was just like Daniel. If you could count on him. He would pray. Yes, sir. And this was one of his pr favorite prayer spots. Yes. So let's let's go over there. And, and the Bible says... Uh, and Judas then, having received a band of officers, it took a minute to get 600 men together from the chief priests 
and the Pharisees. He says, come hither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Look at this. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things <laughs> that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, once they arrived, he walks up to them. He's in the garden. Tell, the, tell his men, stand back. He walks up to them and says, whom seek ye? And they answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus said unto them, I am he. And Judas also, look at this, this is ugly, which betrayed him, which betrayed Jesus, stood with them. He's standing now with Jesus' enemies. 600 men. The Bible says, As soon as he said unto them, I am he, they went backwards and fell to the ground. Judas included. All of them fell. Why did he knock them down? He says, I, I want to show you that you can't take me. Mm -mm. You can't, you can't. I'm gonna go. I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna do this. But you can't take me. You can't, you can't, you can't do this now. Get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up before I kill you. You can't, you can't, you can't take me. Then he asked them again, "Whom seek ye?" I'd have been afraid to answer. They said, and they said, "Jesus of Nazareth." And Jesus answered, "I have told you, I am He. Therefore." You seek me. He says, I'm the one you're looking for. Let these other disciples, let them go their way. That the saying might be fulfilled, which he spake of them, which thou gavest me, I have lost none. That was a part of the prayer. John 17 and 12, he said to the Father, all that you've given me, I've lost none, except the son of perdition. Then Simon, having a sword, drew it and tried to cut the high priest's servant's head off, but he missed and got his ear. The man's name was Malchus. Then said Jesus unto Peter, put up that sword. Put it in the, into the sheath. The cup which my father has given me, I shall, shall I not drink it? And then the band of officers, they took him. This explains why I'm getting ready to have communion. Are you following me out there? Y'all love the Bible. I know up room members, y'all love the Bible. Listen, listen. This explains why Jesus said something in Matthew's gospel, chapter 26, beginning with the um, 44th verse. See? Verse 44, and he, see, because while he was out there in the garden, look at this, Bible says, and he left them and went away again the third time and prayed the same prayer. Remember, he told Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, James and John, verse 37, said, watch with me while I pray. My soul is exceedingly sorrowful. So during, during this time, Judas was trying to get back. See, he had, he had already gone to the upper room, and Jesus was gone. So they're trying to find him. Jesus prays three hours. Bought time. Three hours. And then verse 44, verse 45 says, Then cometh his disciples. Then cometh he to his disciples and said unto them, Notice the resolution. Notice the contentment. Notice the, I've done my job. He says, sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand that the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. All right, guys, rise, let us be going. <laughs> Behold, he is at hand that doth betray me. Verse 47. While he yet spake, Lo, 
Judas, one of the twelve, with a great multitude with swords and staves, from the chief priests and the elders and the people, there he appeared. But by the time Judas got there, Jesus' plan had worked. I have taught them all that they need to know. I have put it, matter of fact, I made sure, I made sure John heard it and because it needs to be written down. They need to know that there's a comforter. They need to know that I'm the way, the truth, and the life. They need to know that I'm the true vine. They need to know about the communion. They need to know that I don't want them in 2020 celebrating the Passover, but a new celebration. This is my body that is broken, and I, and I needed time. So I use Judas's unbelief, but I use the belief of Peter and John and an unnamed man carrying a water pot. Then it came down to what my good man, this head of the house, will do. Will he flinch? Will he freeze? Will he forget what I've told him? Will he crack at the moment? He's got to have that room ready. Everything's got to be fixed. This guy, everything's counting on him. He's got to have everything in order. What will he do? And when the time came, the man stepped up. I've said to the Lord many times, God, if and when the day come, if I have to pay it all for Jesus, God, give me the strength. To pay the price. When, it, when it's time to act. When it's time to speak up. When it's time to further the cause of Christ. God give me the strength. That I need. To speak up. Let me be God's good man. Because that man did his job. Jesus was able to teach the disciples. And say everything that he needs to be that needs to be said uninterrupted, not just for their sake, but for ours. Look at the, the tenets of the faith, the, the teachings of the doctrine that we know simply because this plan bought him time. See, and when they got him in the Garden of Gethsemane, they didn't, they, he didn't get time to rest. They took him from judgment hall to judgment hall. They took him from kangaroo court to kangaroo court. They beat him. They spit upon him. Oh, they mistreated him. They put a crown, crown of thorns on him. They blindfolded him, struck him, and said, prophesy and tell us which one of these hit you, Jesus. One of the reasons why Jesus could do what he did. One of the reasons why he could be on the cross and not call for the 12 legions of angels to come and get him off the cross is that he had time to teach the disciples. And they forsook him. Peter denied him. The disciples forsook him. But he knew that he planted the word in them and, then that, and that that word would germinate. And he gave them what they needed to have that while he was in the ground, in the tomb, he'd given them enough. It wasn't their best moment. They were behind closed doors. They were locked away. They were afraid. But they had enough to see them through until the women came and brought them good news. We just left his tomb and it was empty. He's alive. He's alive. Lord, whatever your plan is, I want to pray for you. I want you to stop what you're doing. Even in this COVID-19, even now, Lord, with the depopulationists coming out of the closets, with wicked organizations like planned Parenthood, 
getting more government consideration and backing allowed to operate in most places, thank God for the state of Texas, in most places uninterrupted where sanctuaries across this country and around this world are empty because the government said so. And you know, uh, the jury is even out, Lord, on whether or not any of these governors or mayors had the constitutional authority to do what they've done. It'll play out. It'll play out. It's not settled. They, they, they know that they've overreached. They know it. It'll play out. But with this happening, there's a plan that God has for you, that God has for me, that God has for all of us. And I don't know if it's to carry a pitcher of water, to be the good man of the house, to be Peter, to be John. But I'll tell you what I do know. It's not our role to be Judas. Amen. Amen. I know that. I know that. God didn't call me to be an unbeliever. God have not saved me. He didn't wash me from my sins for me to buckle when I'm needed the most. I want to pray for you. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this hour. We thank you for this time. We thank you for this rather unusual Easter message. But Lord, just as they were plotting and planning then, around this same time of the year to kill you. They're plotting and planning now. We're dealing with whether or not the government even has the authority to do what they've done. We are hearing messages from even people who are Judases who are telling us this is the new normal, and it's just as good as being in church. Oh, God, we do not receive these voices. We're hearing from people who capitulate, who have no backbone, who have no standards, and they're trying to tell us. But, Lord, we will not deny the faith. We trust you. We trust you. We trust you in everything. We trust you with, the, with our origin. You created the heavens and the earth. You made man from your own image. We trust you with marriage. It is a union between a man and a woman. We trust you with sexuality. Oh, he that lieth with mankind as with womankind, it is an abomination. We trust you, Lord. With all of the prevailing issues of life, we trust you, Lord. In our stand against abortion, you declare that a man would not be found uh, innocent, would not be guiltless for shedding innocent blood. And yet, Lord, we talk about this virus and how many have died and the death toll altogether. It's almost a bad month in the abortion industry. Oh, God, and we trust you. We, we trust you, Lord. And, Father, where we fit in your plan, where we fit, whatever role, we ask you to anoint us to be ready. Anoint us to be ready. Anoint us to recognize. Put that, put that sanctified Holy Ghost trigger in us. That when we hear certain things, that it will trigger things in our spirit. Give us the ability to recognize the men who are carrying water pots. And to follow them and not follow the crowd in the name of Jesus. 
I pray for a spirit of alertness. Wake up the saints, Lord. Wake us up, Lord. Wake us up. Wake us up. Wake us up. Give us the, the ability to have that faith and acumen, the acumen that is necessary to do the will of God, to know how to go in and out amongst God's people. We bind the enemy right now in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, release your anointing. Release your anointing. Let people feel the weight of this message. Let each viewer realize that they are godly, divine, God-called sales. You know, they said one time that Al-Qaeda or some of these other groups already have sales in America on standby awaiting instructions. Well, God, you have sales. You have soldiers who we go about our everyday lives serving you. We go about our everyday lives living for you. But God, when the commandment comes to witness, to share, to preach, to step up, to do this or to do that. God, we kick in. We shift gears. And we kick in to that God-assigned role. I pray, Father, for strength not to come up small in a day like this. May we not blend in. And just become one in the number. Preachers are preaching, Lord. And people are praying. And they're saying, God, move the plague. God, get rid of COVID-19. God, open up the, the, community, the economy. God, let the jobs flow. But Lord, where are the voices that saying, God, we repent. Lord, we repent of our sin. Lord, we repent. We repent. We repent. The Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. Neither is his ear heavy that he cannot hear. But our iniquities have separated us from our God. And our sins have caused him to hide his face from us. Lord, we repent. In the name of Jesus. Now I speak that good man anointing hallelujah. hallelujah you never know when God's going to call on you but when he calls be ready in Jesus name amen hallelujah thank you Lord